In today's video, I draw a circle, drop parts into the plastic cup, pour water on the sponge. In addition, I moisten water slide decals with a hot water and insert skewer into the fuselage. Hello fellow modelers, I am going to build this nice P47 Thunderbolt without an airbrush. So this video is primarily for beginners who struggle with a metallic surface. If you are new to this hobby, then I highly recommend starting with a smaller scale like 72 and choosing a good quality kit, otherwise it could discourage you. There is a detailed manual that helps you with assembling and two markings versions, you need to choose only one, the B is more straightforward. You can notice that each part has a number and letter, there is usually more than one sprue, therefore the letters could help with searching for the correct component. Perfect, I found the part, but I must somehow separate it out of the sprue. Excellent and cheap are side cutters for wires, however the cut is not usually perfectly precise and you need to remove residual sprue. Handy is sharp hobby blade, but Sophie's ordinary packaging knife if you don't have it. Also it would be best to have some metal or nail files of different shapes. Sometimes cleaning residual plastic is more complex and round file could be a lifesaver. These small parts are tiny, so store them in the boxes or cups if you do not want to lose them. The next step is painting, but if you don't want to hold the parts in your fingers, then handy is to create an easy holder tool. It would help to have a cell adhesive poster gum and some wooden spatula or toothpick. There are plenty of types of glues, but after a few years of modeling, I use only super thin glue for plastic, PVA glue and super glue. The thin glue has a small brush and evaporates quickly, therefore the application is effortless. Ok, prepare parts for painting. The following numbers in the manual are for paints. I don't recommend Tamiya acrylic paints for paintbrush, because the application could be a nightmare. Instead of these paints, try to use water-based acrylic paints like Vallejo, Revel Aqua, Zadel, AK, Mig or Armor Painter. The significant advantage is that they are odorless, dry fast and you can dilute them with ordinary water. Mm -hmm, they dry fast, so that could be a problem, therefore next trick, you need to create a wet palette from a plastic box, water, sponge and baking paper. If you apply paint on the paper, then it stays fresh for a few hours. And do not forget to shake the bottle properly. The correct dilution is thinner than dense. The layer must be partially transparent, something like that. The layer is not fully coverage, but that is good because you need more smooth layers instead of one thick. And it is better to have a flat paintbrush. As you can see the layer is smooth and all details are well visible, therefore try to always apply two or three layers. The funny part is details and for this is a good thin round paintbrush and the dilution should be more densely. You can use color directly from the bottle if you want. A more advanced technique is wash. It is basically highly diluted paint with an acrylic resin thinner. Let it flow into all gaps and details, it will make them more pronounced. It is also an easy technique how to make artificial shading. Last but not least step, what you need to know is water slide decals. I will talk more about it later, but simply cut the needed part out of the paper and dip it into the water. I highly recommend some decals chemicals. One helps with a proper setting and application. 
as you can notice the decals are printed on transparent film, which is usually thick. The second decal softer chemical will partially dilute it and therefore the decals copy underneath details. The last detail in the cockpit is red buttons for guns and some others on the dashboard. Sometimes you don't have a proper shade and if you don't want to buy all the paints, you need to learn how to mix them. For example, I need iconic Zinchromat green paint, but I do not have it, consequently I mix green and yellow. The next step is engine. You can also buy paints that imitate metallic surfaces. The glue for plastic makes a stronger bond if you remove excess dry color on contact areas. Do not forget to attach wing reinforcements before fuselage assemble. I mentioned that it is good to buy suitable quality kits. As you can see the fuselage fits perfectly. I am fixing the position with ordinary plastic clamps, but you can use ordinary electrical tape instead. It is good to write the part number on elevators. It happened to me when I glue them other way around. It is easy to make here a few mistakes. If you look at the back, you can clearly see that the rudder and elevators are not in the right angle. So when the glue is still fresh, try to correct the geometry. Reading instruction manual is essential, you can easily forget or skip this section, drill holes for bombs and rockets. I have micro drill bits for electric boards, which are also handy for our models. Do not drill out the second holes if you don't want to install rockets. This part is thicker than it should be and therefore does not fit perfectly. Consequently, I'm making it thinner slightly with a sandpaper. This kit is perfect, so it was hard to find some problems, but I found some. You can notice small deep end circles on plastic parts. Ejector mold pins cause it. Most of them are hidden after a complete assemble, but some are not like here on the wheel well doors. I use for filling small imperfection with Tamiya white or grey party. Nicely take up small amount of a party and cover ugly pin marks. The drying time is 1 or 2 hours, so meanwhile you can finish other steps. If is appropriately dry, then remove excess party with a soft sandpaper. The next issue is mold lines. It is caused by two-part mold technology. Some kids have them more pronounced, so you must spend more time cleaning them. Sandpaper or sharp hobby blade is all what you need, usually. If you do not have a flexible super glue, then use ordinary party for the step. The fuselage is properly dry, but you can notice ugly seam line across the whole length. It would be best to fill it. I use super glue because it's more resilient against chemicals and stronger than party. Do not forget at the wings leading edges. Important is again remove residual party or glue in this case. Now a little bit more advanced technique, so you can skip it if it is one of your first models. The problem is that I filled panel lines with a party. I can restore them with a hobby blade, but more straightforward, faster and cleaner solution is to use a razor saw. The blade is very thin and has a sharp teeth.
I am gluing on the surface masking tape, which helps make a nice straight line. Now a little bit of magic. It would be time consuming to fill and sand seam lines around the air exhaust. Therefore I cut out specific part from thin styrene sheet and cover the whole section with it. It seems that the model is prepared for painting. I don't use airbrush for this model, but spray can. Therefore cover already painted parts with a poster gum or cleaning sponge. On the surface is dust from grinding and grease from fingers. If you want to increase color adhesion and paint finish, then clean the surface with a soapy water or isopropyl alcohol. At this moment it's good to wear some gloves, you prevent fingerprints. I am drilling out small hole for a skewer. Why skewer? It helps with the handling meanwhile painting. Do not even try to paint a large flat metallic surface with a paintbrush, because it is very difficult and you would not be pleased with the finished model. Therefore the magic is spray can. It is not expensive solution and one bottle suffice for three or four models. It is important to shake it properly and apply a few small layers from a distance. Two or three usually suffice. Also spray your model outside or in perfectly ventilated room. The silver particles are pretty messy, so probably you don't want them in the whole apartment. Please, do not touch the surface when it's still wet. The result is quite nice, primarily the layer is lacquer, therefore is remarkably resilient. You can use a silver paint from a spray can for a paintbrush. There should be a green line on the top of the fuselage. It reduces the sun reflection on the pilot from the aluminum surface. I do not even try to paint the shape of a strip freehand. I use masking tape instead. I again do not have a precise olive green paint, but this one looks similar. What we have already learned? Never apply a thick layer. You can see that the layer is transparent and you can still see the base aluminum. The second layer is better, but still not full coverage. Now remove the masking tape. More layers could create a thick edge on transition. As you can see, a little bit of paint flow under the mask. But you can easily scratch it off with a toothpick. And the third final layer. I already have a shape, so it is easy to outline it. The P47A marking version, which I chose, has invasion stripes. If it looks difficult for you, then you can build the second P marking version. Cut the decals out of the sheet with a sharp scissors. Be careful, try not to damage decals around accidentally. I prepared a bowl with a hot water. The ideal temperature is around 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. The paper sucks the water faster and heats make the decals more flexible. Consequently, it does not crack so easily. Deep the decals into the water only for a few seconds. I already mentioned decals chemicals. The most important is Microsol. Actually you don't need precisely this one. There are other brands and types, but they work more or less same. A few drops of a decal setter helps move decals on the surface. I do not apply decals precisely, but it is not a problem. I easily move it to the correct position with a toothpick or cotton swab or larger with a finger. Do not use any tools like tweezers, scissors or hobby blade. The decals are very soft, consequently you can easily damage them. Let it dry and set. As you can see, you cannot see underneath details, like panel lines or rivets. Therefore it's time for Mr. Setter. Apply it across the whole decal. The magic starts immediately. The decals reveal details and become wrinkled. But do not worry, all will disappear. Just do not touch it for one hour. The instruction manual is great help meanwhile searching the best place for your roundless. The panel lines works like a guideline. Sometimes are decals larger or smaller than in the manual. So take it indicatively. The 
The most difficult is black-white chessboard. It will help if you cut out the base varnish around decals and curves. You will avoid problems this way. And do not apply softer immediately after application and use only the setter. Did I tell you that if you heat up decals when they are more flexible? You can utilize this behavior by using hairdryer. This way it is not a problem setting decals to all complex curves. When the work is done, fix the result with a decal softer. There are some labels. Good practice is to mark in the manual which you are already applied. I am gluing painted parts with a super glue. It makes a strong bond even on paint. If the plane holds on the wheels, then you know you did a good job. It remains to paint and attach small details, and we are done with our model. Or not? The surface looks very uniform and dull, therefore I recommend trying washes. It is not the same as I used for cockpit shading. This one is enamel based. You can wipe it out with a thinner even after drying. Simply let it nicely flow into panel lines and rivets. As you can see, it makes them more pronounced. You can try to apply it to the whole surface and make some panels darker. It will make the surface optically less uniform. The wash is dry, but there is unpleasant residual stains. Simply use a thinner and wipe them out or blur them. The models are primarily about details, so you play with them and improve them. But I think that it is enough as a model for novices. So that is all. You ask me if I could build some models without an airbrush and more for beginners. It is a good idea and I will try more models like this, including tutorials focused on separate steps. I wish you good luck with your P47 or any other with an aluminum surface. Ok, thank you for watching and see you next time.